If you've ever taken a cruise, you've probably sat in awe as you watch your enormous ship pirouette off a berth and gently slip alongside, parallel parking between two other vessels. Well, today we're going to take a look at the technology that makes it happen. Let's start by considering the past and look at how the old ocean liners used to do it. Typically, they would have a propeller, or maybe multiple propellers, at the stern and a rudder, and that was it. That's fine on passage when you're thundering across the North Atlantic at 20 knots, but when you get into port and the available space reduces, your options start to become quite limited. Basically, you need the assistance of tugs. Really, you're looking at a bare minimum of two, one on the bow and one on the stern. Realistically though, you'd engage at least four. If they're powerful enough, the four and a half tugs could just drag the bow and stern around as required, and as you approach the berth, the other two would rest alongside to manoeuvre laterally onto the berth. That was fine back then, as those liners would spend many days crossing an ocean and then take tugs maybe once a week. As those liners evolved into cruise ships, however, towage costs mounted quickly, as they were in and out of different ports on a daily basis. Not only that, but to be able to engage sufficient towage, the harbour authority needs to have a supply of tugs and have enough traffic to justify their running costs. Again, that's fine when liners are running in and out of the same ports regularly, but cruise ships don't do that. They like to offer passengers new and exciting destinations, and to do that, they need to be far more self-sufficient than the old liners when it comes to manoeuvring. Let's take this one as an example. At the forward end, you'll have at least one bow thruster. The most common design is just a tunnel through the hull with a propeller inside that allows water to be pushed out perpendicular to the ship. At the stern, she'll typically have multiple propellers and independent rudders. Some may have a stern thruster, which works on exactly the same principle as a bow thruster, just at the opposite end of the ship. Some ships may even swap out the propellers and rudders with azimuthing propellers instead. For now though, let's take a closer look at arguably the most common configuration. Twin screw, independent rudders, and a bow thruster. To understand how to manoeuvre this ship, it's actually easiest to consider each element on its own. The propellers, fairly obviously, provide a force that either propels the ship forwards or backwards. Twin propellers do give a turning effect that's proportional to their distance from the centre line, but with both running together, the effect is neutralised and you're just left with the fore and aft force. The rudders allow you to modify the direction of force from the propellers, giving you the ability to turn. And the bow thruster gives you a force right at the bow, perpendicular to the fore and aft centre line of the vessel. So how, for example, could you turn this ship in a tight space, say within this turning area in Port Everglades? I'm going to use vectors to indicate movement at each end of the ship. The direction indicates the direction of movement, and the length indicates the speed. Around the edge of the screen you can see what I'm doing with propellers, rudders and the bow thruster. These are the controls, sending orders to the engine room, and these are the indicators telling you what the machinery is actually doing. You could keep it really simple, and just run the bow thruster. With the ship stopped in the water, theoretically it will turn on the spot. In reality though, you do find the thruster can suck a ship forwards. This is because of hydrodynamics, where the shape of the hull means the thruster is sucking water from ahead of the ship, creating a low pressure point that slowly sucks the ship ahead. It's not a massive effect and can easily be cancelled out by trickling the engines astern. But what if you wanted to turn with just the engines instead? Well, this is the beauty of twin screws. You can split the sticks, running one engine ahead and the other astern. The forward force from one cancels with the astern force from the other. Theoretically, you're left with no fore and aft motion. All you're left with is a turning force, which is proportional to the distance each propeller is offset from the centre line. Just imagine a comically wide ship, and you'll immediately see how effective a large offset could be. The exact point that a ship will pivot around is quite hard to determine. If the propellers were positioned either side of the middle of the ship, obviously the ship would pivot around its centre. But with the propellers right at the stern, the ship will still want to pivot around its centre of mass, but the centre of mass will want to move as well. It is experiencing a force acting to move it sideways. The result is that the ship will move around a kind of artificial reference point that we refer to as the pivot point. For us, it's next to impossible to work out the exact location of the pivot point at any given time as it's constantly changing position, which is a result of all the forces we're applying as well as hydrodynamic interactions around the hull. In our particular case, the pivot point gets dragged back almost to the line of the propellers, 
Splitting the sticks alone will rotate the ship, but it can be a challenge to keep it in position. That's where you can start to introduce the rudders as well. Instead of having the starboard engine running straight ahead, you can put the rudder over and direct the force off at an angle. You still have the turning effect from splitting the sticks, and you still have the fore and aft power cancelling out, but you now also have the rudder acting to move the stern to starboard. The overall effect is that the ship is still turning, but it now appears that the pivot point has moved further forwards. Balancing the rudders and the engines, it's possible to turn the ship in the middle of the turning circle. It's even easier when using the thruster combined with the engines. If it's all balanced, you can just crank up the power and turn faster. But if, for example, you notice your bow is turning faster than the stern, you can just ease off on the power of the bow thruster to slow the rate of turn at the bow and keep yourself within the turning circle. And that's all that ship handling is, using the equipment at your disposal to keep the ship balanced and turning within your predetermined safe area. So how about getting onto a berth, parallel parking as it were? Starting from a position parallel with our berth, we want to make the ship walk sideways. We start off by thinking what would happen by splitting the sticks. Running the starboard engine ahead and the port engine astern would swing the bow to port, and that's where we want the bow to go, so let's just go with that. But we also want the stern to move in as well. To get the stern moving to port, we want to direct some of the thrust from the engine away from the berth, so we put the rudder over to starboard. Seems simple enough, but the power pushing the stern towards the berth is way higher than the turning force generated by splitting the sticks. You could just use minimal rudder and walk in very slowly, keeping the bow and stern balanced. Small boats do this, but it would be quite impractical on a ship. Fortunately, we have that bow thruster which can just bring the bow straight towards the berth. So again, all we need to do is keep everything in balance. You have the rudder and the starboard engine to walk the stern in. You've got the port engine stopping the ship moving ahead, and you've got the bow thruster bringing the bow in. You can ease up on the power as the ship comes close, and it's just a case of landing parallel on the fendering along the berth. So with all this technology, what's the big deal with manoeuvring ships nowadays? Well, the main one is the weather. Large passenger ships have a massive amount of windage, which can very easily overcome the power of the thrusters when trying to move sideways. In windy conditions, even highly manoeuvrable ships will either employ the services of tugs, or maybe abort a manoeuvre entirely to remain safe. Despite all the advances we've had in ship handling technology, Mother Nature can always throw up conditions that are just too much to handle. And that brings us to the end of today's video. If you enjoy content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content. Until next time, thank you for watching, and goodbye.